Empyrean Galactic Survival has got four different types of structure that you can build in game. You've got bases, hover vessels, small vessels, and of course capital vessels. And in today's video, I'm going to quickly take you through how to build each one. Now, when you're starting out in the game, bases are probably the first thing that you're going to want to build. Somewhere to call home, somewhere to dump all the loot and stuff that you've managed to gather, and somewhere to respawn to when you die. Now, by this point, hopefully you've recovered some resources from the surrounding area, and you've built yourself a little portable constructor, which you can construct from your suit constructor here with five iron ore. Once placed down, it is a bottomless pit with no volumes or weight uh, limitations, unlike the rest of the game, assuming you have that option enabled, of course. Once you've gathered some resources, you should be able to build a base starter block over here. This is what you need in order to start building base. And of course, once you've got that starter block, just put it in your toolbar and you can get this nice little green ore, which you can place pretty much anywhere. And there we go. This is the start of your base. Now you're going to want a few more items in order to make this base actually work. First thing, you're going to need a fuel tank, a generator, and a cargo box at least. Add them to your toolbar and attach them to the core that you just placed down. And simple, just like that. Now remember, with cargo boxes, you can right-click and select a slightly bigger cargo box. There you go. That, technically, ladies and gentlemen, is all you need for a base to actually qualify as a functioning base. If you hit P while looking at your core here, you'll have the control panel of your base. Go to Devices, and it will complain that O2 tanks are missing. O2 tanks are entirely optional, depending on whether the planet is breathable. Now, there's a lot more complexity to go into with bases. However, for the sake of keeping this video short and bright, you only need a fuel tank and a generator in order for your base to actually function. Everything else technically is optional. However, you will want to explore the options available in your portable constructor, such as solar powering your base so that you don't need to put fuel in the tanks, a fridge to keep your food uh, uh, fresh, Wi-Fi to access your storage remotely, armor lockers to switch out your armor, and a clone chamber so that you can respawn at your base. These are probably the most recommended items, followed by the small constructor, which will be the next level, the next tier of uh, constructible items available to you. But once you've got the basics, the rest is really up to you. Use blocks such as carbon, wood, or concrete, or even steel in order to build out the footprint of your base. Now, if you're building your base on a planet, you'll want to take into consideration something called structural integrity. This is, well, as the name suggests, if you build out too far, dragging the blocks out, the base will actually collapse. Now, uh, you might notice that I've got a bit of different colors on my screen here, and that's because I've enabled the structural integrity view. Now, what you can do is hit the N key on your keyboard there, go to the debug menu here, and click show structural integrity. If you are building something that maybe can't have a lot of support towers, like a hangar bay or something like that, you can turn show structural integrity on, and it'll give you color gradient based on how much integrity there is and then you can add a support pillar in in order to stop your roof base collapsing and then just uncheck it when you're finished and then eventually once you have explored some block shapes the other devices available you can turn that generator and fuel tank and core into the base of your dreams don't forget that the more devices and things that you add to a base such as furnaces you may need to increase the amount of power the base produces. You can keep an eye on your power usage, again, using the P key on your keyboard to see how much power your base is using uh, and other general statistics, like how much solar the solar panels are generating and so on and so forth. Just remember to explore the constructor and use the filters to filter to bases. You can then explore each device, what it costs and what it does as you add it to your base. Finally, don't forget to defend your base as well, because when you place a base down, you can have a look in statistics here. The next base attack information will appear down here. Now, I'm in creative mode, so there's no base attack. Um, but if you are on a planet with a Xerax, for example, they will probably want to attack your base within a few days of it going up. So defend it well. Don't forget 
turrets require an ammunition box uh, with ammunition in them in order to work. And finally, finally, don't forget that items such as your generator and turret are priority targets for incoming enemy drones. So make sure that they are placed away from anything else that may explode, such as fuel tanks, and placed on something maybe is a little bit harder than plastic. Sorry, carbon composite. And there we go. Don't forget, so you can right click any sort of standard block and you'll have all the various shapes available to you. Explore them, experiment with them, play around with them. And like I said, be soon, you'll have the base of your dreams. Now then, moving on to hover vessels. Just like the base, you can build a hover vessel starter from your portable constructor. Now, most new players will probably start out as a hover vessel as their first vehicle, but experienced players might even opt to go straight for small vessel. But small vessel starter blocks can be built in small constructors, which you require a base for, so it may not be as accessible as the hover vessel if you're still working from a portable constructor here. Still, however you go about it, with hover vessels, it's the same deal. Get the starter block, place it on your bar, and then place it on the ground. Now, hover vessels are a little bit of um, witchcraft, really, <laughs> in Imperial Galactic Survival, but I'll do my best to try and explain their nuances to you now. First up, just take note of this little white arrow here on the starter block. This denotes the direction of which your hover vessel is actually facing. It's quite important if you want the compass in the top right corner there to work when you're inside the hover vessel. The core looks the same from any direction. So this white V, quite important, really. You can, once you've memorized that direction, you can remove all these superfluous blocks around the outside, or you can leave them there. It's entirely up to you. There are four particular items in which you need to get a hover vessel to technically work. And that is a cockpit. And don't forget, you can right click this to access a variety of different cockpit designs. A fuel tank, a generator, and, well, at least technically one of these little green engines called hover repulsors. I believe they're called hover repulsors. Round repulsor engines. Um, these things provide both hover, thrust, and turning capacity. However, they are extremely limited and perform quite badly. However, technically, this will get a hover vessel working. You'll then need to add some sort of fuel. It will probably be biofuel uh, to the early game, the uh, stage of the game, but you can also use Promethean cells, fuel cells, fuel cells, whatever you got handy. Uh, but there we go. Technically, that is a working cover vessel now. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to win any awards, <laughs> but it works. It works. That means that everything else available to you in the, uh, the hover vessels in the constructor over here is perfectly, is absolutely optional. Uh, let's have a little look, shall we? Now, you've got similar things to which in base, you've got Wi-Fi for wireless access to your cargo. You've got fridges to preserve food. Uh, there's armor lockers maybe available uh, there. Uh, O2 stations in case you're on a non-breathable planet. There's even a hover constructor, cargo boxes, O2 tanks, of course. Um, now, once you get to a point with your hover vessel, you'll find these little green engines will start to betray you. They will start to fail. They do not have a very good lifting. They can't lift a lot of weight. Um, they don't go very fast and they don't hover very high. The maximum hover height for these little green guys is 1.5 meters, which sounds good enough, but look at it next to that rock right here. You're gonna hit things. Whereas the nice, larger, more expensive, in every sense of the word, blue, hover engines, these guys here will give you three meters of hover height. However, these guys do not provide any thrust or turning capacity. They are 100% just hover engines. So if you're putting these on without putting thrusters on and going, why am I not moving? That's why you need thrusters. So if you're going to use the blues, you're going to need uh, some extra um, thrusters in order for it to move. So let's go ahead and grab some of these, shall we? And I'll show you. Here we go. So the little blue guys here, we can place them a little. We can even place them a little higher and they don't need to be even uh, on the bottom of the ship here. Just bear in mind that if you do, like I'm doing right now, place them sort of midway up the vessel, um, then you will be you, you will have less hover height based on the bottom of the ship there. So once you've placed the blue ones, you can take the little green ones off. 
and you can get back in your ship and now we can hover up to three meters as indicated in the bottom left corner of our heads up display there uh, if you just about see that and there we go we are way over that rock now everything's fine we'll be able to just plod along nicely without actually colliding with anything however i'm pressing w right now somehow this thing is turning and i'm not quite sure how it's doing that <laughs> Svand, you lied um, I'm not quite sure how it's turning, but it is. Uh, maybe maybe I was wrong, and they do provide some kind of turning talk. Anyway, we can't move backwards, forwards, left or right. We can't move in any direction. All we can do is turn, apparently. So then we get our little thrusters here, and we need thrusters in every direction. So we'll add two on the front for reverse, and we'll add two on the back for forward. And then we need our lefty-righties. So we'll add one's there, and we'll add one's there. And you notice how I'm spreading these out. I don't want to go into too much detail about thruster placement, but if your thrusters are, the closer your thrusters are to the sort of corners of your build, if you were to build, a, a, imagine a box around your build, the closer they are to the corners, the more performance you get out of them from, from torque, turn and stuff like that. And there we go. We can now move our ship absolutely fine. And it, it bops along, look straight over a rock. No, no worries. Okay, so a little bit more power and flexibility in your hover vessels by using the blue engines just make sure you add thrusters to your build and then it will move and there we go that's pretty much hover vessels everything else in the hover vessel category here is optional or increases of current components like larger generators larger thrusters armored cockpits and then we're going into shields and stuff like that let's not even get stuck into cpu right here or we'll be here all day as always explore your constructor uh, find out what each device is doing and whether you'd like it. Spotlights, for example, you probably wouldn't think of that straight off the bat, but when night comes, you'll damn well wish you had some. Passenger seats if you're playing with other people. Docking pads if you want to dock it to uh, another vessel or your base. Just remember, all of this is optional. What you technically need in order to get a hover vessel to work is just a generator, fuel tank, cockpit in order to sit in, and then some sort of propulsion, be it the little green guys or the little blue guys, coupled with some thrusters everything else you see around the razorback here is blocks is just shaped blocks so just like bases you can grab whatever sort of block you want be it steel don't forget to right click to explore all the shapes available to you explore them experiment with them and then you can create the hover vessel of your dreams and that ladies and gentlemen is hover vessels okay next up ladies and gents we're talking small vessels svs these things can be anything but small sometimes and as you can see here from the cyclone uh, they can be pretty fancy looking and very effective in combat and now even mining as well in fact a lot of people are of the opinion uh, svs make hvs completely redundant so let's find out how to build one first of all you're going to need at least a small constructor as part of a base because this is the only one that can build a small vessel. Larger constructors can build small vessels as well, I will clarify. Once you have a small vessel starter block, just like with hover vessels and bases, pop it on your bar and place it down. There we go. And just note that small white V arrow, again donating uh, which direction the vessel is facing. Make sure you build the front pointing that way, <laughs> otherwise the compass will be backwards and uh, only absolute scrub lords would do that on their builds yep absolute yeah just 100 percent. you wouldn't catch me doing that ever not really um okay anyway quickly back to our constructor here and filter via small vessels we can see a variety of blocks very similar to hover vessels in a lot of way except these guys need thrust in all directions including up and down they also have some extra bits and bombs that are advantageous such as particular types of weaponry that you can mount mobile food processors if you're playing the reforged eden mod and did i mention the fact that they can fly so with that you've probably already figured out what components we need in order to make this small vessel to technically work you're going to need a cockpit you're going to need a fuel tank a generator and you're going to need like i already said thrusters in all directions that's at least six thrusters. <laughs> like, to be honest i'm not going to be doing much you're going to want at least two two smalls in each direction for a very light craft. So then we place the cockpit down, the fuel tank down, the generator, and then we get to work on some thrusters here. So again, I'm going to try and build these out to the sides as best as I can to get the best kind of performance on them. Okay, so that's 
forwards and backwards and left and right but as this thing flies you also need up and down so i'm going to rotate this block down there and there there and there I'm totally giving myself four down thrusters and i've run out of thrusters because i'm so good at this and then we need thrusters pointing up like that and there we go. This technically now will function as an SV. Give it some fuel, power it on, jump in the cockpit, and off we go. We are flying. Yay! Simple as that. Absolutely as simple as that. Everything else is optional. Okay, technically that is a working SV. It will fly. Uh, it will die, just like the rest of them. This is a wonderful machine. Just don't forget, you need thrusters in all directions. Try and spread your thrusters out to the corners of your vessel as best you can to optimize their performance. Everything else under the SV category in various constructors available to you is entirely optional, depending on what you want your full vessel to do. Just like with the hover vessels, you might want your hover vessel to be a miner or a fighter. It's up to you. Just use the blocks that correspond with that. Don't forget to explore the vast array of weaponry available to small vessels. Your play style and what you want your SV to, uh, small vessel to do will depend on what weapons you want to load onto it. You may want to consider oxygen, especially if you're taking this thing into space. Having some oxygen tanks on board would be very useful. With that, an oxygen station so that you could refill your suit tanks would also be very useful. And if you want your small vessel to be able to jump to other systems, other planets within the solar system you're going to need a warp drive and a pentaxid tank and let's not forget the old staples of wireless connections cargo boxes and if you're using your sv to scout and explore a detector is almost definitely mandatory everything else like i said is completely optional if you want your sv to dock landing gears if you want to protect it shields and if you want it to fight whatever gun you choose don't forget they will need an ammunition controller and then, of course, eventually, after playing around with many, many block shapes and having about 4,000 hours in the game, you can build something like this. Under the hood, this really is just this thing with more blocks on it. It's some thrusters, generators, and fuel tanks. I've just added more bits and bobs to it. It flies all the same. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, small vessels. Finally then, ladies and gentlemen, we're having a look at capital vessels, probably the most complex and functionally diverse structure and vessel type in Imperial Galactic Survival. Also probably one of the most fun things to build and definitely uh, the structure that I think everybody kind of aspires to have is some sort of cool looking capital vessel. This ship says absolutely everything about what type of player you are who you are it is an extension of yourself so you definitely want a capital vessel that you like that works for you and yeah just does everything that you want it to do now you might have several of these things in fairness because their function like i say varies quite wildly the ventress here is a kind of do it all jack of all trades master of none type ship uh she's she's great for sort of mid game but she's not a good fighter she's not great at anything she just does a bit of everything which is useful as a single sh explorer ship going around the galaxy but not particularly useful if you want to do one very specific job really really well anyway we'll get into that later how the hell do we build something like this well this is where a base really comes in handy because you're going to need a large constructor which uh first of all you're going to have on a base before anything else probably and then you can build yourself a, uh, well, you guessed it, a capital vessel starter block. And just like the other ones, you can go ahead and place that capital vessel starter block down somewhere. Notice immediately how much bigger this thing is than everything else. Uh, and once again, we have that nice little white uh, V arrow there pointing the direction front of the ship. Now, just like with SVs and hover vessels, you can remove these kind of extra blocks around the core here if you want to, once you know which direction the ship is facing, okay? But let's have a look, see, in order to get this thing to technically work, it is almost exactly the same as a small vessel. You're going to need a small a fuel tank, a generator, thrusters in all directions, and what's called a control station otherwise known as a cockpit go ahead and place these items on your new ship just like you've done plenty of times already again if you can spread out your thrusters that's even better 
And then finally, place your control station down. And technically, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a working capital vessel. So, like I say, almost exactly the same as an SV. This thing will fly around, and it will look stupid doing it. Um, <laughs> it's really twitchy. <laughs> um, but yeah, there we go. We've got thrusters in all directions, and I've kind of spread them out a little bit. And I've maybe put too many thrusters on such a small hill. <laughs> I've never built anything like this before. This is hilarious. Um, but yeah, technically that is a working capital vessel, okay? Now everything else, and I think you're getting the theme of this uh, video now, right now, is entirely optional under the capital vessel uh, filter here. But you can see straight away just how many more blocks there are. I've got reforged Eden scenario loaded. But there are so many options for capital vessels. You do really need to decide what you want your capital vessel to be right from the offset in order to decide what kind of stuff you're going to put into it. If you are playing with CPU points enabled, which I think most people do nowadays, you're going to definitely want to trim down its functionality in order to fit it within the available CPU. But let's not get into CPU, that's not what this video is about. Uh, if you want your capital vessel to be able to store things and carry things around, which to be fair, is probably the first function I think you'll want a capital vessel to do is to take everything that's in your base, leave the starter world and go exploring off into the galaxy. You're going to want some cargo boxes and probably some container extensions that can carry much heavier things. Uh, you're going to want Wi-Fi in order to move things in and out of there seamlessly. Now, and the thing is, the bigger your capital vessel gets, the more larger thrusters you're going to need in order to haul a it's ass and b it's assets do i did that um and anything in its cargo box you're going to need larger thrusters there are mediums there are advanced and finally there are drive thrusters for the really big jobs with more with bigger thrusters become more power demands you're going to need larger generators uh, and then that adds more fuel demands you're going to need larger fuel tanks all of this is adding more cpu so the balancing act of capital vessels is a really really tricky one to get right uh the ventress here i'm using as an example has got the maximum amount of available cpu without going into the end game stuff 2.1 million in here in reforged eden i have to keep clarifying this if you're a new player um these numbers are different in vanilla okay uh, but the principles are, are basically the same um, so the CPU, this thing fits almost perfectly into the available CPU and it, like I said before, it functions in every capacity at some level. It has constructors, they're bright pink for some reason. There we go, let's just uh, <laughs> avert your eyes, <laughs> pay no attention to the pink constructors, it never happened. It's got constructors, it's got storage and it's got shielding and it's got, a well it hasn't yet, but it will have a garden. You know, once you get the grow plots in here, you can have your own food production. It's got warp capability and it's got guns. Okay, it's got a bit of everything. It is possible to do. You can do it. And again, all the stuff around this uh, core generators and fuel tank here is entirely optional and just shaped blocks placed down strategically in order to create this illusion of a ship. At the end of the day, this is a core with some fuel tanks and some generators some thrusters and a cockpit. Everything else is optional, <laughs> as I just demonstrated. You can get a flying CV with just these components here. OK, so do, like I said before, explore your options. You know, uh, what do you want your ship to do? There are so many great examples on the Steam Workshop. Uh, do explore those. Have a look at the sort of popular builds. They're popular for reasons. And reverse engineer them. This is my pioneer. A starting capital vessel. I put starting in inverted commas. Because for some people it's rather chunky as a starting vessel. But for exploring the galaxy, it's perfect. It's a, it's a smaller version of the Ventress up there basically. You've got a, a small hangar bay. It's warp capable, you can add shields, it's got cargo, it's got constructors that are also bright pink for no reason whatsoever. And it's got a small garden with all the medical facilities, lockers, and so on and so forth that you might need when you're out and about trying to find your perfect planet where you want to set up your permanent base and so on and so forth. 
when you leave the starter planets, you're not... Well, I, I, most people don't go back to them. So, <laughs> you, I mean, for me, I want a ship that's able to take everything that I've built on the starter planets off the starter planet. And for that, you need something quite chunky, like the Pioneer here. It has the storage, the thrusters, and the upgradeability uh, for you to proceed into the galaxy with ease with ease and there we go and again most you know these these wing things they're just blocks there's there's nothing on them they're just blocks <laughs> so you know uh don't be overwhelmed by some of the shapes and stuff like that that you see on the workshop because all it is is steel blocks that are just in a variety of different shapes placed down in order to do to create the illusion of a ship this thing is also just a core with some fuel tanks and a cockpit. Okay, I think that covers it. I mean, from a basic point of view, yes, there's a lot of advanced things I could go into, like CPU, like weights and volumes, like thruster placement, power balancing. But you know how to use the P menu now and open statistics and have a look at the statistics and stuff like that. This can show you the performance of your thrusters, how much lift capacity you have, as you need add, subtract thrusters, whatever you need to do play around with it it will take a long time to get used to it and figure it out but uh you'll get there and uh yeah once you have put in four thousand hours into the game you will be able to build something like that up there so uh, no sweat easy peasy you got this <laughs> don't worry about it um <laughs> the main thing is build something that you're familiar with that you're comfortable with happy with and works for you if it's if it's a brick but it works then it's good okay there we go ladies and gentlemen i think i've covered everything a little bit probably in too much detail um hopefully you found this useful uh do let me know down in the comments either way also if you just have any other questions that you might want to ask me do uh type them down in the comments below i will do my best to get back to you as soon as i can and help you out as much as possible also check out i have um other build academy videos on a playlist on my youtube here do check them out if you're new to the game they can be quite useful some of the more advanced features in the game and you might also benefit from one of my many other imperium playthrough series where i do my best to try and explain the process throughout the game all the way from beginning to end game um i'll link to a bunch down below in the video description and hopefully you'll find them useful hopefully a little bit entertaining as well perhaps anyway if you enjoyed this video do consider giving it a cheeky little like i'd appreciate it thank you very much thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed and hopefully i'll see you next time till then take care bye bye